Hey guys, this is Julian with Julian Tech Reviews and we're back with another comparison video. And today we're gonna to compare two companies that are prevalent in the market, which is Apple and Google or Android. But before we get into that, if you can please like, subscribe to this channel, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all the support. Without further ado, let's go ahead and cook. So today I wanted to make a video and just take a look at some of the subtle differences between Android and Google's hardware versus iOS 18 and Apple's hardware. Now today we got two models. We have the iPhone 16 Pro Max with another lovely case on top of it. And then we have the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold. This is Google's second edition of the foldable. And we're going to compare like a sound test, video test, social media test, just hardware, home screen settings, wallpapers, you name it, we are going to talk about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. And the first thing we're going to talk about is just the look. Now, it's going to be a little bit unfair from Google's side because I'm dealing with the foldable. However, I'm going to only use the front screen to compare against Apple to make it <laughs> apples the oranges or apples the apples whatever it is. So anyways, let's talk about the hardware. So the first thing we're gonna look at is just the design of each phone. So the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a two beam approach and it has about four cameras inside of it. And it's on the left side of the phone, on the back of the phone. The Apple has the three camera system and they're all kind of like in the same spot. And just by comparison, they have a glass, kind of a glass back that is not transparent. And then when we turn it over, they also have, you know, the Gorilla Glass uh, front to make it look HD. And then let's talk about what they have on the side. So in the traditional iPhone has, you know, the volume rocker on the left side, which we have right here. It has the switch or the silent button here. And then we have the power button here. And then there's a camera button here. And Google has pretty much all their buttons on the right side, which is the power button and the volume rocker here. Now, if you want to use Siri, you can just hold this button and Siri pops up. Or if you wanted to use uh, Google, hey Google, you can not double tap, you can just say, hey Google. And there it pops up. All right, let's look at wallpapers. So this is a neat one. So I really wanted to look to see which one is kind of better or have more HD or whatnot. And so I have two Spider-Man uh, wallpapers here. Now these are the most 4K uh, wallpapers that I chose in online. And so I just wanted to share with you what they look like comparing to each other. So if I look at the iPhone, it is absolutely gorgeous with the 4K resolution or whatnot. However, uh, the Google phone has a little bit of the same characteristics. However, it's just not as bright. So I have it on automatic. And if I turn the brightness all the way up, it doesn't it's about almost the same. Just let me know what you think in the comments. So I have it on full brightness and I don't have the Apple on full brightness, but these are comparable. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you have a wallpaper on there. Now let's go ahead and open up and look at our home screens. So this is the home screen for the Apple. So I have kind of like customizable, uh, just home screens. So I have all my icons arranged in a certain way. And as you can see, it has, you know, that 120 hertz refresh rate, I believe that's in here. So pretty cool. And then let's talk about the Google. So the Google has pretty much smaller icons. Um, everything is pretty much smooth and quick. And if you want to go to the home settings, you can, uh, you know, change the, let's see here, wallpaper and style, you can change the size of your apps and you can change the grid. So you can do a lot more with Google and with iPhone, you can't really do as much other than, you know, customize your, your apps by, you know, creating them in the dark, 
and light, making them large, small, automatic, and tinted. So that's pretty much it when it comes to just the subtle differences. I wanted to just show you what it looks like uh, compared to an Android phone because I'm an avid Android user and it is what I'm trying to show you today. Now, another thing you notice is that the background uh, is not showing, it's showing a blurred version of the Spider-Man. Whereas if I open up my Google, it shows the full Spider-Man wallpaper. And the cool thing about it is you can make this a 3D. So it wasn't a 3D 4K video, but when I turn it on, as you can see, it slightly moves. That's really cool. So it makes it really 3D. So that's awesome. All right, so the next thing we are going to show are the social media apps. Now, you wonder what it looks like on social media for the Android and the Apple. And let's just kind of dive in to see which ones are best and see the subtle differences they have. So the first thing we're going to start with is Instagram. So with Instagram, you have kind of like a nice bright. Oh, let me turn the brightness down here. So Android likes to keep their phones on, uh, you know, automatic. If you do automatic on a nice setting, Apple likes to keep it on bright, keep it on 100 all the time. But otherwise, let's just take a look and see the subtle differences. Now, one of the things that sticks out to me is just kind of like the full coverage. So the full the phone is fully immersed with Instagram on the iPhone, whereas the Android phone, it has you know, full immersion of the of the display. But since this extra bezel is around here, it kind of feels like it's cut off. But that's just that. And then on the bottom, everything's pretty much the same here. So we got uniformity there. All right. So let's go and talk about videos here. Let's see if we can find oh, a similar one. All right. So when you go into the ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you just when you go into an actual video, this is what you're gonna see. So you're not gonna see full screen on the Android, but it still has the same Hertz refresh rate, so that's that. But when you go into the Apple, you're gonna get pretty much the full screen, and it really takes advantage of this Retina display, and I really do like that. So that's Instagram. All right, let's talk about Facebook and see what Facebook's got cooking. All right, so with Facebook, once again, you have full immersion of the entire screen. And let's look at anything else that we notice. So the icons on Facebook are on the top with Android. The icons are on the bottom with Apple. So there you have it. And if you used to, you know, have an iPhone, it'd be kind of weird to switch to Android to kind of feel it and vice versa. So let's go ahead and look and see if we can find maybe like a nice video and compare. Oh, let's go to the short. There's no way that the trimmer is on. All right. So as you can see, let me see if I can turn the volume down. Oh, my God. I was down here. All right, so as you can see, we still have the brightness up on the iPhone and we have it in a normal uh, kind of neutral brightness here. So let's go ahead and see it's, it's actually full screen. And this one is half or not half screen, but three quarters of screen. But so that's that one. So the theme is that Apple keeps everything fully immersed and use, utilizes all the pixels and Google does not. All right, let's look at Inst uh, X. So we go into X and right away, everything is fully immersed, as I said before in the last couple. And let's see if I utilize a video. So, oh, that doesn't count. Well, we can kind of look at that. So it doesn't do full screen. So you're gonna get kind of a It's kind of there, but it's on the same footing here. So side by side, the pictures are the same. And let's see if there's any uh, differences on the handles. And it looks like we got uniformity on the ha handles down here. Everything's on the bottom. 
So overall, the social media apps is just kind of what you prefer. Okay, I look at the Apple and I really enjoy the way that they put together the social media. Um, people are looking at, you know, Android. I know I don't have the biggest Android, but you see the software optimization is much better with the Apple. Let me know what you think uh, when it comes to social media apps and what do you prefer, Apple or Android? All right, the next test we're going to utilize is the video test. So I wanna to check to see the sound, the quality of the screen, uh, just any kind of extra features that it might have. So we're gonna test each one. And I have queued up on the Apple, uh, the Apple event, and I have queued up on the Google phone, Android phone. I have uh, made by Google the 2024. I'm going to make sure that all of the, everything is high quality. And sometimes whenever, by default, it gives you the lowest quality, but we're gonna go to the actual highest quality. And to be fair, I'm just gonna do 1080p on both because uh, this one has, this video that was made has 2160p uh, pixels. And then this one has at, at the most 1080. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the Apple and the sound. And let me know what you think in the comments below. and polished titanium. The design of Series 10 is truly a milestone of watchmaking. It has the powerful S10 SIP and a breakthrough new sleep apnea feature. Series 10 is our fastest charging watch yet with all day 18 hour battery life. New depth and water temperature sensors make it great for water activities. It includes the intelligent new features of watchOS 11 and it looks fantastic with this year's watch bands with bold colorways from Nike and refined new styles from Hermes. We can't wait for you to experience how great Series 10 feels on your wrist. Apple Watch Series 10 starts at $399. You can pre-order. All right, guys. Actually, let me see Read what it looks like on a lock screen. And it will be available on September 20th. So it's still playing. Next, let's talk about Apple Watch Ultra. Ultra is the most rugged and capable Apple Watch with all of the powerful and intelligent features that help keep you connected, healthy, and safe. And it's also the ultimate sports watch. Here's Stan to tell you more. All right, so this is the uh, iPhone 16 Pro Max with uh, YouTube and the sound quality is great. Uh, the different attributes it has whenever you're multitasking is pretty awesome. So not only can you go to the home screen um, and do some more productivity, you can actually utilize this dynamic island to kind of peek into the time and, you know, pause it um, if you don't want to, you know, have a video available while you're scrolling. And then as you can see, when you put it on the lock screen, the lock screen does show the Apple event uh, YouTube name and it shows you the play and pause button. So you can utilize that with the iPhone. All right, the next we're gonna try is Google. And we have queued up Made by Google event. So let's go ahead and There are turn it so on. many different ways that people around the world are already using Gemini to make everyday tasks easier. People love the new Gemini Assistant because it can help them do so much more. Pick me now and always make a change. Hi everyone. We've got some fantastic new devices to show you today. In fact, it's the biggest update we've ever made to the Pixel family. Pixel is our platform for showcasing the very best of Google AI. All the Gemini helpfulness you've seen so far is built right into Pixel. And we're going even further with Pixel 9, the first phone designed for the Gemini era. The full stack that Rick walked you through comes to life in Pixel in ways that are simple and helpful. You've got Tensor, our custom designed silicon that's specially tuned for our AI models. And you've got our latest on-device model, Gemini Nano with multimodality. 
Thanks to this powerful on-device infrastructure, nearly every experience across the phone is powered by AI, including unique fi features we've developed just for Pixel. Today, we're going to show you new ways that on-device AI is improving your phone calls. New Gemini powered. All right, and that's enough for uh, this video. So as you can see, the Google Pixel, I mean, the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold, uh, even though it's in this form, it has full coverage of your video options. The quality sounds really great and it's in, it sounds deep. Uh, you can definitely hear a lot of good tones uh, with it when you're watching your videos. It's, it's, it's a pleasant experience uh, when you can hold it this way, uh, landscape or portrait, and you have a little bit more uh, dynamic <laughs> uh, multitasking capabilities with the YouTube app on your Google phone or Android phone because you can multitask and you can literally pull up two apps as I showed you in the video. So once again, this is uh, for your preferences of what you prefer. Um, if I were to, you know, hazard a, a guess on what I would choose or what the majority we use, a lot of people will say the iPhone, but there's a lot of people that love the Google and their snappiness and, you know, it's just up to you. And that was the video test. So comment below and let me know which one you prefer. All right, the next test we're going to use is the sound test. So the sound test is going to determine, you know, how loud your phone is going to be uh, when you're in the confines of your house or you're outside and you want to listen to it without no headphones. This is what it's going to sound like. And we're going to determine uh, which one is louder. Uh, I'm here with both of them, so I'm going to be able to make that determination. And you may uh, hear it through the video, but let me know what you think. And we're going to start with a video. It's called My Heart and Everything Mashup uh, from a non-copyrighted uh, free music. So we're going to start. We're going to play the same song on both phones. That was the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Excellent quality. All right, same song. Let's go ahead and try with our Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold. All right, that was a Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold sound test. Let me know what you think in the comments below. My choice in, the matter, in this matter is the iPhone. Even though the sound test on the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold, it had a little bit more surround sound uh, when you're playing it and you're directly in your face because it has excellent distribution of the speakers. The iPhone even though it has all of their speakers on the bottom, I definitely felt the bass, the sound quality was there. 
So my preference will be uh, the iPhone 16 Pro Max on this, but you totally can have a different opinion. Let me know in the comments below. That was a sound test. All right, the next test we are going to do is the gaming test. So gaming is gonna be a huge feature for those who get these retina displays, these high quality HD 4K displays. You wanna utilize that uh, when you play your games. So what better game to try than Asphalt uh, on this, these two platforms? So the first test we're gonna utilize is just what it looks like and how does it pan out uh, when you're actually playing. So I do have the iPhone 16 Pro Max here. All right, and we are off with Asphalt Legends in a tutorial. So this is what it's gonna look like. All right, and that was gaming on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Let's look at the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold. So let's go ahead and crank it up. Now that's a pretty cool ending for this video. So that is the gaming test. Both phones are capable of getting all your gaming needs. I think that uh, App Store for iPhone has a lot more games and a lot more flexibility because um, I guess software engineers and app creators love, or it's very friendly on the iPhone. It's sometimes it gets hard to get an update on Android just from my experience, but I definitely enjoy the experience here because I'm getting that bass, that sound, and the movement is great. The refresh rate is awesome. Uh, but let me know what you think just based off of what you see here, or just let me know in your experiences below uh, of what you think about the gaming experiences on either phones, Android or Apple. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So my goal today was to show you just the subtle differences between Android phone and iPhone with iOS and just kind of go through some of the tests to see um, if we got an even race or we got uh, somebody in the lead. And from my experience and my final thoughts on the matter, I really think that the iPhone has the lead on all of these uh, features. I mean, you can pretty much 
do anything you want as far as with sound quality, uh, with just visual quality, and the gaming features are just as good on this kind of like wide berth of a phone. You're getting a lot of excellent, high quality, um, you know, phone experience. The hardware is cool now. It's been a little, it feels more liquid, um, you know, just utilizing all the software on the iOS. It is very polished and it really enhances the experience uh, here. Not to say that um, Android hasn't, you know, had the great experiences uh, with their software because their software is getting a lot better and more snappier, but you're getting, you know, a lot more open, just editing, uh, customization, 3D effect, um, and the hardware is definitely on par. And some would say it's a lot more innovative than kind of Apple because this has kind of been the model for the last, uh, you know, five or six years or excuse me, four years. So it's a little tired, but I do admire, you know, Google or Android phones uh, being the bar when it comes to innovation. Um, but quality wise, uh, definitely iPhone is in the discussion and I prefer, you know, a lot of the features that come on the iPhone compared to the Android phone. Well, that wraps it up, guys. Um, I hope you uh, got something out of this. Uh, comment below if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for um, following me in this journey. And once again, this is Julian with Julian Tech Reviews. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.